Hello, and welcome back to another video. My name is Jake the Genealogist. And a while back, in the early days of my channel, I posted a video on what I called the most inbred monarch of all time, that being the Spanish King Charles II, and I covered his inbred family, the Spanish Habsburg line. Well, that video ended up becoming pretty much by far the most popular video on my channel, so I thought that I would make another similar video covering three more inbred monarchies from history. So let's get started. Starting with the Seleucid Empire. Now, the Seleucid Empire was created as a Hellenistic state in 312 BC after the division of the Macedonian Empire, basically after the death of Alexander the Great, and it became one of the major powers of the ancient worlds, at its peak stretching all the way from Greece to India. Its first ruler and namesake was Seleucus I Nicator, or the victor in English, one of the Diadochi of Alexander the Great. And his first wife was named Apama, and with her he had several children, Antiochus, his successor, Achaeus, and Apama. Later into his rule, he married Stratonici, daughter of Demetrius I of the Antigonid dynasty that ruled over Macedonia. With her, he had one more daughter, Phila. Phila actually eventually married her own uncle, Antigonus II, brother of Stratonici. By 281 BC, Seleucus attempted to take over Macedonia and Thrace, but just after starting his conquest, he was assassinated by Ptolemy Curanus, son of Ptolemy I of Egypt, and his son Antiochus ended up taking over as ruler. Now here's the thing, when his dad was still alive, Antiochus had a bit of a fancy for his stepmother Stratonici. So much so that his own father put together a marriage between the two after finding that his son was apparently dying from lovesickness. So Antiochus ended up marrying his own stepmother, having several children with her. Apama, who married her third cousin, Magas, the king of Cyrene, as well as having an affair with her daughter's husband, aka her uncle, as well. Um, he also had a son, Antiochus II, who was his successor, and Stratonici, a daughter, who married her nephew-slash-first cousin, Demetrius II, king of Macedonia, son of the aforementioned Phila. Moving on to the second monarchy, continuing on to the Inca Empire. Now, most of you have probably heard of the Inca Empire from the famous archaeological site at Machu Picchu, or from the terrible Disney movie, The Emperor's New Groove. Yep, not a big fan at all. But, if you've never heard of the Inca before, basically they originated from the Kingdom of Cusco, based in Peru, but eventually expanded out to cover practically the entire west coast of South America. In this family tree, we actually start with the ninth Sapa Inca, Pachacuti, the ruler who transformed the Kingdom of Cusco into the empire we all know and love. He fathered several children, including his successor, Tupac Yupanqui, who is actually not the namesake of rapper Tupac Shakur, that was another later Peruvian rebel in the 18th century. And he also had a daughter, Mama Oklo. After his death in around 1471, Pachacuti's son Tupac took over the throne, and as per the traditional custom of the Inca, married his own sister, Mama Oklo. It is said that Tupac ended up having at least 90 illegitimate children, though, compared to only two legitimate sons. One of his sons was his successor named Juana Capac, and he had two daughters named Carissime and Rawa Uklu. In 1493, in the wake of his father's death, Juana Capac took the throne. He once again for custom married his biological sister, Kusirime, but she ended up dying before they had any children. So what does Juana Capac do? Well, he marries his other biological sister, Rawa Uklu. Juana ended up having several illegitimate children, including the final Sapa Inca, Atahualpa, and a daughter, Esarpe. With his wife, he also had a couple children, including the penultimate Sapa Inca, Huascar, and Chukwi Huipa. As expected from this family, both Huascar and Atahualpa married their biological sisters, and after Atahualpa's death in 1533, the Incan Empire fell to the Spaniards. Well, a tragic end to probably the most powerful South American empire. Finally, I'll be talking about the ancient Egyptians, or more specifically the New Kingdom of Ancient Egypt, or even more specifically the 18th Dynasty of Ancient Egypt. 
Anyways, we start with the Pharaoh Amenhotep III, known as the Magnificent, who ruled from around 1386 to 1349 BC. He ended up having several children, including Tutmos, Amenhotep Sidamun, and a mysterious daughter who was found as a mummy called the Younger Lady. Now, before Amenhotep died, his eldest son Tutmos mysteriously disappeared from the public records, presumably dying from unknown causes, and this set up his brother Amenhotep to become first in line for the throne, and upon his father's death, Amenhotep ascended to the throne, becoming Amenhotep IV. Amenhotep married Nefertiti, daughter of future pharaoh Ai, and they had quite a few children, including a daughter, Ankesen Amun. By the way, it's also worth mentioning that Amenhotep's sister, Sidamun, married her own father during his reign. Um, that was a very common custom in ancient Egypt, to marry your own father. And around five years into his reign, Amenhotep decided to convert the entire Egyptian kingdom from mainly worshipping Amun-Ra, the then god of sun and air, to mainly worshipping the disk of the sun, Aten. Amenhotep ended up changing his name to Akhenaten, or Effective for the Aten, thus sparking a new era of Egyptian history known as the Amarna period, because uh, that's where the new capital was. However, after his death, Akhenaten became very ostracized by future pharaohs by destroying his many temples and statues, worshipping Atenism, as well as converting back to worshipping Amun-Ra once more. Besides marrying Nefertiti, Akhenaten also reportedly married his own sister, the younger lady, the last is widely disputed, and having a son, Tutankhaten. Then, Tutankhaten's half-sister, Ankesen Amun, went on of relatives marrying Rampage, marrying her own father, first, Akhenaten, and then her grandfather, Ai, and then, finally, her half-brother, Tutankhaten. Akhenaten died in around 1334 BC, and after several short-lived rulers, including his own wife Nefertiti, his son Tutankhaten took the throne. Now you might be asking yourself, well, Jake, wasn't there a pharaoh called Tutankhamun who ruled d during this time? And you are absolutely correct. Before his reign, the Amarna period, or period where they were worshipping Atenism, was ended by the pharaoh Horemheb. Tutankhaten therefore changed his name to Tutankhamun to reflect these changes, and he ruled for only about nine years before dying, thus ending the 18th dynasty of Egypt, as well as this video. Thank you to everyone who stuck around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up so I can make more of these types of videos, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content like this, and turn on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever new videos of mine come out. Final thing, if you want to suggest any ideas for more inbred monarchies I can cover in future videos, let me know down in the comments. That's all for now, bye!